Hi, I'm Phil Hill. Welcome to eLiterate TV's series on personalized learning. In our last two episodes, we learned about ASU's ambitious plans to redefine our idea of a high quality yet high access public university by using personalized learning technologies. How does this change the role of faculty, however? For that matter, how does it change the role of teaching assistants? We're going to explore these questions by looking at a remedial math course that was redesigned using the popular Khan Academy platform and content. What we've done is create an online mechanism to coach students. Each student is assigned a, a trained undergraduate coach under the direction of, of our instructor who then helps that student understand how to use the Khan Academy and other tools to work on the skills that they show deficit in mm -hmm. and work toward being able to satisfy the very same standards and tests that we've always used to ascertain whether a student is prepared for the rest of their college work. Yeah, actually I helped in designing the course. Actually we mapped uh, the old curriculum into the new curriculum like the, um, the practice exercises that were in the old course. We found the same exercises in the Khan Academy website and then uh, we, we, we made the bookmarks for all the exercises. So we, we had around 65 recommendations for the students for this new course. Beyond the changes in the usage of technology resources, the design and assumption of courses like Math 110 with Khan Academy show a clear change in the role of faculty. So let's get more of a first-hand experience as an instructor, as the instructor for the course. What is a typical week for you as the course is running? What do you do? Who do you interact with? I interact by email and sometimes Google Hangouts with the coaches mm -hmm. and with some of the students. Now, not all of the students are going to contact me about a problem they might have because many of them don't have any problems and that's mm -hmm. wonderful. But quite a few of them do have problems either with understanding what they're supposed to be doing or how to do what they're supposed to be doing or how to contact somebody about something and then they'll send me an email. Okay. So as you go through this, it sounds like there's quite a change in the role of the faculty member from a traditional course. And since you just got involved several months ago in the design and in instructing it, describe for me the difference in that role. What's changed and how does it uh, affect you as a professor? Before I did this course, um, the way it's being done now, I had taught MAT 110 online a few other semesters. And the main difference between those experiences and this experience is that with this experience, our students have far more help, mm -hmm. far more assistance, far more um, people willing to step up when they need help with anything to try to make them be successful. Mm -hmm. What about the changes for you personally? Um, partly because I think ASU is growing so much, my class sizes are getting bigger and bigger. That probably would have happened even if we were teaching these the way that we taught them before. But well, that's one big change, more and more students. So having these coaches that we have working with us and for us has just been priceless. We couldn't do it without them. Okay. So you're, uh, so one thing, it sounds like you're almost over, your role comes into more of an overseeing the coaches for their direct support of the students. Plus, it sounds like you step in to directly talk to students where needed as well. Right. I think that explains it very well. Beyond the changes to the role of faculty, there are also changes to the role of teaching assistants. Basically, in a traditional course, there's one instructor, maybe two TAs, and a class of maybe a bunch of 175 students. So it's, yeah, it's pretty hard for the instructor to go through each and every student. So it's like now we are uh, 11 coaches for session C. So each coach is having different set of students, a particular set of students. So it's much easier to focus on the set of students and uh, that helps for the progress. So what I mean is our motto is to get nine out of 10 students to complete the course. Well, I think as a coach, it's a little more involved with the students on a day-to-day -day basis. So every day I keep track of all the students, their progress, and, and if they're struggling on a skill, I 
make a video, send it to them, ask them if they need help understanding it, that sort of thing. So Jacob, it sounds like this is almost an intervention model, that your role is looking at where students are and figuring out where to intervene and prompt them. Is that, is that an accurate statement? I think that's a pretty fair statement, yeah, because most of the students, a lot of students, they're fine on their own and don't really need help at all. They kind of just get off and run. Um, so mostly I, I spend most of my time helping the students that actually need help and, and I also spend time and encourage students that are doing well at the same time. Sure. So Namita, describe what is a typical week for you and is it different, any differences in how you approach um, the coaching role than what uh, we've heard from Jacob? Uh, it's pretty much the same, but my style of teaching is I make notes. I use different colors to highlight like the concept, the formula, how does the method go. And then many of my students prefer notes, so that is how I do it. So, there, so there's sort of a personal style yeah. of the coaches that's involved. Uh, I had some students who, who did pretty well in the first week of the course and they completed like 20 exercises. So it's all about recommendations. Plus, if the student is having any questions on, if they are stuck on any of the questions, then uh, they, they mail us and we have a Google Hangout on uh, Fridays or on Mondays, whenever it's, it's possible for them and uh, possible for me. And, and like this, by Google Hangout, we, I, I try to solve their problems. Okay. So you're acting, as I understand it then, partially as a coach to encourage them to move forward, hey, we need to work through these problems quicker, but then you're also acting as a subject matter expert to help give additional explanation of the math itself? Um, yeah, it, it would be perfect for me to say that it's, it's the blend of both the things. Um, coach to motivate them because uh, uh, it's uh, the student who are taking this course, it's after they, uh, they did not do well in the placement test and they take this course. So it's, it's like a motivator for them. Also, uh, subject expert, as you said, so like uh, technical, all the mathematics difficulties they face just, just to solve them mm -hmm. and um, like influence them to go ahead with mathematics because it's, a, it's, it's an important tool for any of the field you see. As with faculty and teaching assistants, students also need to come to grips with their new role in the class. As far as Math 110 goes, there's actually uh, very little as far as responsibilities during a, a basic week because uh, you're really able to kind of do your own thing. One of the nice things about the Math 110 program and specifically the Khan Academy is uh, you're given a recommended set of skills to learn. Uh, you work throughout those skills throughout the course and uh, you'll practice those skills, you'll develop those skills, you'll master those skills eventually and what that's going to do for you is give you the ability to prepare for a final test and that final test is really kind of the only thing that has any bearing in the class, everything else is mostly just practicing uh, the, uh, the skills and, and the, the formulas that you're given for the, for the course. Is there a downside of this self-paced nature? Absolutely. There's, no, there's not a lot of accountability, so it is on me. It is very much my responsibility to uh, make sure that I'm on task and make sure that I'm on track. But I do have a coach that does a really good job of networking with me and um, following up with me during the course, uh, or the seven weeks of the course. So tell me a little bit about this coach, student coach relationship. How often do you talk to them? How do you talk to them? What role are they playing as you have any kind of conversation? Sure. Uh, what you hope for during a course like Math 110 is that you don't have to talk to your coach too often because uh, that means you're on track and that he's not harassing you to get your stuff done. So. Uh, it's good to know that that resource is there if you need it and you are struggling. Um, but as long, as long as you're on pace and you're feeling comfortable with the material, they're really just there to make sure that, that you're taking in and absorbing what, what the university and what the Khan Academy is trying to give you. It, and these differences, how effective is it for you to meet your academic goals? I think, it, I think it's a huge advantage for me. Again, because of the flexibility, it gives me that ability to uh, engage myself when, when I have you know, the time to give it my full attention. So uh, with these different style of resources, it's, a, it's not necessarily a more challenging or a less challenging format. It's just simply learning and adapting to a different style of learning.
Sue and Amita highlight the team-based course design and the emphasis on coaching individual students. One common theme that we're seeing at ASU and elsewhere is for personalized learning to de-emphasize the traditional faculty role at creating and delivering content. By doing so, it can free up faculty time to spend more effort on coaching individual students. This contrasts with much of the marketing around personalized learning, which tends to emphasize the software's ability to adapt to the student's needs. What we're seeing is that the faculty role becomes more important, not less important, when you implement a personalized learning program.